Beautiful Feet 2020, a report of a short-term mission trip to Republic of Benin, organized by Campo Momentum and entitled Nobendeya. Beautiful Feet is an international mission trust of Campus Momentum in response to Christ's call to take the gospel to unrich regions of the world. We at Campus Momentum have been organizing missions exposure trips within and outside the country to enable our young undergraduates, graduates and professionals experience firsthand what doing missions is all about. During these trips, they have opportunities to preach the gospel to the unrich people using the evangelistic tools we have sleep where they sleep and eat what they eat. So fornication, no, stealing. It's of chance. There is no chance. They are watching for idol. He will judge you. He will judge every sin. Every sin, he is coming as a judge. Now, I'm going to say, 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 The result has always been the same. Souls, souls, and more souls for the kingdom. A memorable adventure and a heart cry for more laborers. This time, we embarked on a short-term mission trip to the Republic of Benin. We started on the 21st December 2020 and lasted till 31st of December 2020 with a team of 14 persons, most of whom were university students and graduate professionals. The team members include Dr. Ete Etebong, Pastor Ajayi, Inemeno Odombang, Joy Gabriel, Abion Odo, Odwak Tom, Otibe Etebong, Joseph Gracious, Jephthah Esien, Enobong Christopher, Emmanuel Apania. Esther Azupo, Ememebong Inyam, and Righteousness Apaisu. Project Location, Gwere Bangi, Gure Bombay, Sako Sakode. Street and house-to-house -house evangelism using creation to cross story. According to Report 2018, Benin is located on the Bight of Benin in the Gulf of Guinea and is bordered by Nigeria, Niger, Burkina Faso and Togo. The southern part of the country has a tropical climate and vegetation, while the north is a drier savanna. Bene population is evenly distributed. More than two thirds of the people live in the south and not in savanna grassland, although half of the country in terms of area are only sparsely settled. Send us out. Send us out. Send us out. Send us out. Historically, an important ethnic group, Bariba, live in the northern Benin, especially in the Bagwe, a region artificially bisected by the Benin Nigeria border. Their society is stratified and traditionally held slaves. They are mainly cattle herders. <laughs> Activities. They won Monday, twenty first. December 2020, departure from Uyo, Akwa Ibom State. A team of 12 members departed Ibom Express Park, Uyo, on Monday, 
21st December 2020 by 7 a.m. to be joined by two members from Ekiti and Ilori. We arrived at our camp, United Mission Church for Africa, UMCA Guest House, Ilori, at exactly 1.41 a.m. due to the fact that we had a flat tire in Ondo State. We practically waited for over two hours there for the tire to be fixed and took the opportunity to engage a young man from Akwaibo with the gospel and he received Christ right there. When we took off, we lost our way at some point because the driver did not know the terrain. Day 2, Tuesday, 22nd December 2020. Movement from Ilori to Gwerebangi in Niki, Benin Republic. We left UMCA headquarters Ilori by 8.28 a.m. On our way to Niki, we moved through rough and dusty routes, which made the trip a tad uncomfortable. On our way down, we were urged by the police to drive carefully due to the accident that occurred the previous night, of which five died and one survived. On our journey, we stopped at Batulan, Nigeria, to visit and encourage some Fulani brethren. At the faith, we uh, didn't give pastor. So then, my brothers, they follow me. After how long discipleship, you just become elderly people before you go to school. And just this thing that you are speaking is a gift from God, not even a big service. But we thank God that uh, we have about nine. Uh, three pastors. We are 25 Fulani ministers in Baptist land here. Okay. Yes, we are 25, including our leaders, some of the lean leaders. So we trying to make all over Fulani souls to come, including Buru. We are now reaching Buru Fulani. We are quite different from them. They are typically nomadics. They are going full over. We are now introducing ourselves to have a nomadic pastors okay. who can yeah. follow them. They don't need to have That's the church. That's what we want to do now. We, there is no we'll need. We have nomadic pastors yes. that will be yes. able to move follow with them. them. Mm -hmm. And as they are moving, they are yes. spreading, they are teaching, yeah. they are making convert, yes. and they are discipling them. That's the, 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 the strategy yes. is that because the Fulanis are so, they are so, they are so mobile. Yeah. Are you getting me? Anywhere they get to, you can see them here today, mm. by tomorrow mm. or next tomorrow, yes. they have moved far. So we are thinking that if they have converts and disciples among them, the gospel we are shouting will be able to, mm. re yeah. will be able to reach more lands. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the, the idea is that even if we are going to be walking among the Fulanis, are you getting me? We ourselves who are saying, yes, we want to have a passion and a mind for them we must be ready to also be like them. Meaning that we are going to live with them and we are also going to be yes, moving with them. Are you getting me? That's what we call reincarnation. Like what Jesus did. Are you getting me? We stayed at the border over 45 minutes before we finally moved to Chikandwe, the other part of the border, and we arrived Gwerebangi in Niki Bene Republic at 7.45 p.m. We were all welcomed by our host pastor and Mrs. Femi Dada. Day 3, Wednesday, 23rd December 2020. We had orientation and several seminars. The seminars include engaging Muslims. This was a strategic method on how to reach out to the Muslim community. Creation to cross stories a pictorial representation of the gospel from creation to second coming of Jesus Christ, which culminates in decision-making. Day 4, Thursday 24th, December 2020. In the morning, by 8.30, we paid a courtesy visit to the village head and gave him a token of 2,000 sefer and a loaf of bread after which we moved out for evangelism in the same location where Rebangi, so as to meet the people at home before they left to their different workplaces. I'm going to do this two times. Okay. We're just going to pay our respects That's before we move um, into the community. Move into the other into Nikki. So Rebangi means um, a, a settlement in, on a hill or a rock. Okay. Because this environment is surrounded by um, a hill. 
Continue, continue. Okay. And there are about 800 persons living in this settlement, both adults, young and old. And they have very, very, very um beautiful and wonderful okay. tradition that the culture here is just yeah. so unique yeah. 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 campus yeah. moment too okay. it seemed led by dr it okay. and then here we came to meet um, the host missionary okay pastor femi all right and we have met with several um, missionaries too mm -hmm. on the trip okay. some fulani some from choir some from Benin here okay. so we're working in partnership with them to go and evangelize the world on fulani here okay. Oh. At 3.15 p.m., we had a meeting with Sister Esther Edani, a pioneer missionary in Guerebangi. She told us about her personal experiences and how God told her and called her at a tender age. She built three churches and handed them over to the missionaries as soon as the Lord told her to do so. So how are you doing, Mom? The way of life and the way of death. Too bad she was there, Too bad she was there. In the evening, by 7 p.m., we moved to the village Ed's compound to shoot Jesus' film. And despite being a Muslim, he permitted us. At the end, Jesus Christ was exalted. Day 5, Friday 25th December 2020. On the 25th December 2020, we couldn't go out for evangelism due to the absence of interpreters. This is because they had other programs they attended to. Day 6, Saturday 26 December 2020, we woke up early at 5 a.m. and went for a powerful prayer walk. As we went through the village, sheep, cattle and dogs were awakened. Amidst the barking of dogs and scampering of flocks of sheep, we prayer walked the entire village with torches to point the way. It looked more like an invasion force. We left for the next village called Saku, which is also occupied by some Togolese. On arrival, we split into teams of four and set out for evangelism. Each team had two interpreters, one French and one Baruba. After the evangelism, the community provided lunch for us, which was Tuo Masara and Mian Kuka. Much later, several meals came from different people in the community. The chief of the community supplied cooked food for us several times. The hospitality of this community was very remarkable. At the end of every evangelism, we had above 70 souls that surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. In the afternoon, we had a free medical outreach in Sako community. Health talk on personal and community hygiene, nutrition and family planning. And thereafter, set out for Jesus film show at the chief's compound at 7 p.m. Day 7, Sunday 27th December 2020. On this day, we walked a long distance to another nearby community called Sakode, also occupied by the Togolese. Here we had the opportunity to speak to the whole community. It happened that as we spoke to a few, more persons trooped out to hear the gospel of Christ. You see this one, somebody died and he was buried for four days. Jesus made that person to come back to life. They got to go to he began to love children. He began to talk about God. The amount they were going to Sukabe, they were going to Sukabe, go house to Sukabe, but two to one, but two to one, or he just buy more food. So if Jesus, if Jesus was here, he would love to be around children, 
Like in the do the things where we they do. Ma, ma, it is done very well. And this papa come grow. Ma, you dey come here. He come like picking. Ma, you dey picking. He come like picking. Ma, you dey picking. Because yah. After the creation to cross story, many made the decision to follow Christ and wanted to be baptized, but were hindered because their husbands were not informed. At noon, a service was held at Saku. Many came from the nearby village Saku Day. In that the church was unable to contain the masses, we held the service outside under a tree shed. After the service, 52 converts were baptized. About 52 converts. Okay. So you mean the church has up to 52 converts? Yes. All yes, right. And that Good. is amazing. That's amazing. Glory we be to God. God. We praise God. Also, an interpreter who was prayed for the previous day came back to share his testimony. Day 8, Monday, 28th December 2020, we moved to another community called Gore Bombay, who are nomadic farmers. On arrival to this community, we paid a courtesy visit to the chief and we preached to him, but later realized he was a Christian. After ministering to him, we set out to evangelize the community. In the process of evangelizing the community, we realized that this community were not thorough Muslims, but fetish and believed in their charms. And because of this, some of them found it difficult to accept Christ, while others accepted without hesitation. In the morning after devotion, we went out for evangelism. It was a powerful experience. During the course of the evangelism, we were offered several meals. Bori, a traditional Fulani pap with fresh cow milk, and two de miao. In the course of evangelism, one man who earlier gave his life to Christ but still continued using his charm found out that his charm started failing him, now made up his mind to follow Christ completely. After everything, we moved back to our base, Gure Bangi. At noon, some men on our team, including our international director and national coordinator, went out to play football with the youths. 
of the community and after which preached to them and they all surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. Day 10, 30 December 2020, we left Gurebangi by 7.02 a.m. and set out for Ilori and arrived UMCA headquarters by 3.30 p.m. due to the fact that one of the team's vehicle had a deflated tire. Day 11, 31st December 2020, we left Ilori in Peace Mass Transit bus by 7 a.m. and reached Uyo, Akwaibom State at 10.56 p.m. From there, we all went to our different destinations. Glory be to God for all that He has done for us. Impact Salvation of souls, water baptism, spiritual transformation, medical outreach, numerous testimonies, which include a convert in Guerebangui, couldn't walk, for three months, Enz could not leave his house, but before we left the village, he came to appreciate God for the healing. Several gave testimonies of God's mighty deliverance upon their lives. Challenges. A host missionary had to undo three churches, all on his own. Due to the meal we ate while coming, a lot of team members had running stomach, which resulted in several stops on the way. Language barrier. Few interpreters. Mobility issues, bad roads, and lack of vehicles, adverse weather conditions, stress of long distance traveling, inadequate discipleship, lack of formal education, drunkenness, idolatry, and syncretism of indigents. Recommendations Prayers should be intensified concerning this field constantly. Churches should mobilize more funds and human resources into the land of Nikki. Indigenous converts should be Discipled who will make more disciples. More vehicles and bikes should be provided for missionaries' mobility. I am in the name of the, bank, the National Coordinator for Campus Meeting. I want to speak briefly about the trip we had this year, 2020. Um, it started from the uh, 21st of this month, that is December, we ended um, a few days ago, that is um, the 30th of December. Uh, this trip has been a very interesting trip, very unique trip in its content, its activities and, uh, and the kind of persons that were on the trip. The kind of um, group in which we, we, we met, we are very, very, a very special set. Um, we went to Benin Republic and we worked among the Fulanese, the Gambo Fulanese. Uh, they speak Fufudi. Uh, we, we had to speak through interpreters to them since we uh, are not versatile in speaking their language. We were able to meet them in several camps um, in Nikki and in environs. We by God's help, we were able to reach out to them with the gospel. The major tool by which we reached out to them was the Christian to Crow story from Genesis to Revelation and it tells the story of the cross from the creation down to the cross and the need for man's redemption. At every point we presented the story, there was this conviction that welled up in every heart and they were led to make a decision for the gospel. We saw several converts. And in one of the settlements, God was able to help us with conviction that many of the, of the villagers were convicted and we were also able to baptize some of them. 53 of them were baptized in one day. And we saw the hand of the Lord working in the supernatural as well. So healings and deliverances. The man that had, been, had not been able to move out for about three months we saw the hand of the Lord touching him and he stepped out of his house for the very first time after months. We've seen several challenges. Very glaring was the language challenge. In some of the environments that we, the communities that we worked, we had to speak to three interpreters. One person who speak in English and it was interpreted to French and it was interpreted from French to Fudede and uh, Fudede rather, and then to another language which was the language of the locals. So, the challenge of um, communication. Anybody that wishes, wishes to, 
reach out to the Fulanese have to be able to at least, if not learn the language, get somebody that can interpret very well for them. To the Fulanese are nomadic people, they move, they move around and for you to reach out to them, you must be able to embrace the nomadic lifestyle. And, um, I love them and I appreciate them. The land is dry. I've seen, I've seen that they are very hardworking people, but they need the gospel. If we can reach out to them with the gospel, they are mostly animistic and uh, Muslims. The Islam is gradually taking a hold of them. And we need to reach out to them with the gospel. Primarily, the ones we met were animists. And Islam is gradually taking a toll on them. I pray that God would open up our hearts from wherever we'll be watching this from. God will open up our hearts. The, 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 the harvest field is, is white unto harvest. We're able to, to, to get into a cotton field. This, this was their harvest, their, their cotton harvest season. And the whole field was white, filled with white cottons ready to be harvested. And these are the spiritual implications to us as well. That field is white unto harvest but the laborers are actually very very few and we could see it happening in that land vast settlement with very few persons some some settlements no church at all but we need young people talented people spiritual people prepared people that will step into those lands and conquer them for god thank you very much and god bless you appreciation on behalf of campus momentum we express our appreciation to the almighty god for the huge success during the trip. We also extend our gratitude to the Board of Trustees and all who in one way or the other supported us prayerfully, financially and otherwise. We sincerely pray God to bless you and make your rewards great. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Great Invitation The Lord has commanded that the gospel be given to the poor free. For those who have tried to take the gospel to the poor, especially beyond the shores of Nigeria, they would have found it to be very expensive. You will be required to take care of your transportation, traveling, document, feeding, gospel literatures, and Bibles. Send us out.